Hey guys, welcome to today's vlog. It's time to head to the studio. It's Monday morning. Today, absolutely no business stuff. Took care of everything yesterday. So today, just focusing fully on making music in the studio. This will definitely mean a new tutorial for you guys. And today is the first day of my new intro. So let's head over to the studio and just have a fun day. Welcome to the studio, of course, raining outside as always, day number four with rain, probably today no drone shots. And before getting into the music making part, let me introduce to you really quick my new intern, Julian, he is from Germany, but the south of Germany. Yeah. How old? 16. 16. Young, 16. He's also making music, right? Yeah. SNRG. S N G R. Okay, I will put his SoundCloud link down below in the description. Check out his music. So let me give him an email address, a couple of tasks. I hope you like sanding and gluing. <laughs> Don't worry, you will get proper tasks, but maybe a little bit of sanding and gluing. And then making music. Opened up Logic. This right here is a project for my Stay Forever track. I actually now renamed it into We Walk Alone because the Stay Forever chorus part is gone. I deleted it, didn't really like it, didn't really fit to the style and vibe. And there is one thing I didn't change yet and I think it's super important whenever you produce a kick and it all has to do with the pitch of the kick. So most people pick a sample out of their sample library for their kicks but they forget about that the kick is actually an instrument it has a pitch you need to correct the pitch so that it fits to the key of your song and this is really essential I already briefly talked in another video about it today I want to focus a little bit more on it and back then someone was saying bands back in the days they didn't tune their kicks but that's actually not right every time let's say the Beatles or any other band from that kind of era they had specialized people or the drummer was good enough to tune their drum. For every track they recorded, they tuned it. Yes, if they played live, they might not have tuned the kick every time they changed the song, but live it's not that important. It's unfortunately one of the sad things a lot of people forget. Everyone is asking how to mix better, how to mix like the EDM legends, but people forget picking the right notes is already part of mixing. I mean, notes are frequencies. If you pick the middle C for your bass line, it just won't sound good because it's too high. So you have to go lower. If you go too low, it's too low and will muddy up your mix. Picking the right notes and the right octaves is super important. I even made an entire dedicated video just about how you should place your sounds in the mix because that's already 90% of mixing. As always, we'll just link it up here and at the end of the video. And now is the big question, how to actually make the kick work with your song, how to pitch the kick to the right tone to make it go along well with your bass line. That's usually the thing you have to worry the most about. So you should definitely know the key of your song. If you don't know the key of your song, I honestly don't know what you're doing because you made the song, you picked a key before starting the song, you should know the key of your own song. If you're not musically trained or you're just making an edit, a remix or a mashup, there are some softwares that can analyze songs for keys, but they're not accurate. You can try and research it online. Sometimes the key of a song is just written somewhere or on, on the sheet for the notes. And the other big question is, what's the note of your kick drum? And figuring that out isn't that easy because a lot of kick drums don't have that much tone anymore to them, or they're so low that you can't really hear it. So either you play to the kick and try to find the key by just listening to it, or you just use an analyzer. I got here my favorite analyzer, Span by Voxengo. It's for free. If you don't have it, get it. I'm saying that every single time I open this up. That's how important it is. Now let's just hit play and you can immediately see the kick. Just go with the mouse in there. Try to find kind of the, the peak of the kick and it says it's G. And you can also hold down command and click into it and this way sweep through the frequencies and find the one with the most energy. So in this case, we're lucky. The kick is exactly on the G. If it's not, you have to fine tune it to make it exactly the note and then jump down and up by semitones to make it fit to the key of the track. And in the case of my song, it's unfortunately not written in G minor or G major. 
so we can't leave the kick at G, we have to change it. So in the best case to the root note of the song, so if your song is in G major or minor, you can just leave your G kick where it is at. If it's an A minor or major or C or any of the other keys, you will have to switch it up, but don't always make it the root note. You can make it the root note. I would definitely try out the root note of your key and see if it works, but sometimes it's then too far off from hitting the right frequency you will need for EDM music. And having this punch in the low end is more important than having it exactly in key on the root note. So just pick any other note that is part of your key. So if you're writing your song in A minor, you can pick any of the white notes to just make your kick and it will fit and work together. If you pick any of the black notes, it will just start clashing a little and not sound as smooth as it does when your kick is tuned to the song. And then pitching your kick is super easy. I use Geist for my drums. I just go here into pad and layers and it has here the tune up. So I just hit play. Look here into the analyzer, go either up now I've changed it to A, which would be actually like the, the key of the song, but it's a bit too high, so I would just, I think I would just stay with the G, because G is still part of the scale, so I think it should work. I think that's something very easy. A lot of people underestimate the power of putting things in key. It's so important, especially people that are making electronic music that are not that musically trained get this always wrong it really bugs me i hear it every time i listen to a track even big djs and producers get this wrong and what's even worse they sometimes get wrong pitching percussions to the key of the song and then it sounds really bad because percussions are higher they definitely have a tone and it's it's then just clashing i know a lot of songs and i get a lot of track submits where people just put a loop on top of a loop of a loop with bongos congas and all these kind of things and it just doesn't work so pitch your percussions pitch your drums very important will make the mixing and the low end a lot easier and now for the next couple of hours just focusing on to working on the song and trying to advance with it as much as possible you know what it's time for pizza. chinese or pizza pizza okay Cheese. Got a package. Time for a special unboxing. I just wish this laser here from yeah Yamaha. They they gave me this as a present. I wish I could cut with the laser. That would be so cool, like zoom zoom Star Wars style. But we're still not living in the future, so just picking the other side. And if you're now worrying about the pen, and I know some of you do. This one is garbage, it's not writing, anyways. This is the first delivery of John Sign t-shirts. Look at this, isn't this amazing? And if you're now like, hey John, those are just white t-shirts. Yes, I know. I ordered like six different kinds of t-shirts, all white, all one size to just wear them myself for one or two weeks and then decide which one of them has the best fit, which one is best to wash, which one keeps the size and everything, just to make sure that I will print at the end on shirts that are good, that you guys just get good shirts. Makes sense, right? Because honestly, it's really important for me. If someone spends like 20 bucks on a t-shirt, I want it to like be a good t-shirt that you like wearing. And I'm myself very picky when it comes to wearing stuff. I just, it, it needs to be comfortable and just fit. So with a bit of luck, I will print the first ones with like real print stuff on it within the next two or three weeks. I'm still not sure about which design to print first. If you want to help me decide that, just head over to my Facebook page. I just posted there all of the available ideas. Like I, I will probably just pick one of the covers and print it. Let me know which one you like the best. In the next couple of days, you will see me with a lot of white shirts. And now it's time for, again, a little bit of business stuff. As you know, the Amsterdam dance event is coming up really soon next week. Yeah, next week I will be there on Thursday and Friday, both days and the night in between, probably not sleeping a whole lot, drinking a lot, partying a lot. 
and of course a little bit of business stuff so if you're interested to meet if you're interested to i don't know just come by say hi just get in touch instagram snapchat usually the best way to get in touch with me and i will most definitely shoot the next or the next two or maybe even the next three episodes of edm legends in amsterdam it's the best opportunity all of the djs from all around the world are in Amsterdam and of course I will vlog about both days you're invited to just subscribe follow along and get to know how it's like to go to one of the biggest dance events in the world and also coming up really really soon is the giveaway for my old keyboard the giveaway will start in exactly eight days because in eight days I will reach vlog number 500 which is just crazy but I'm really looking forward to, to celebrate it with you so just come along join this journey through the music world and we will see us tomorrow again to another fun vlog i hope my intern also had fun today yes i mean he at least didn't have to take care of any sanding and gluing but but maybe tomorrow oh, 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 oh. this guy is here like one minute and i already don't like him he has the very new macbook pro and i'm still rocking this old 2013 one you have to be careful <laughs> it might disappear i don't know oh, I need more than the shadow of